All right then. So I'm Anthony, AJ, FTP master, that guy, whatever. Um, and the idea of this box is not a too much lecturing, but just more of a, well, ideally to get people so that they can say, oh, I want this stack feature and I have some vague idea how to implement it and get it started and send a patch in and make it one that's actually has a chance of being accepted. So um, the first thing I thought we might do is just see what sort of features that people are actually most interested in adding to DAC or having DAC be able to do, whether that be separate archives to FTP master that do similar things or extensions to FTP master to do um, supported new suites or other sorts of things. Um, everyone here is familiar with what DAC is. Um, is anyone here not a developer? Not a DD? Front, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I imagine you probably all aware that you can use DAC LS and a couple of similar commands on Merkle if you're a DD. Um, and I presume everyone here has uploaded a package. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you. Um, okay. Um, and are there any basic questions that we should get out of the way right at the start about how DAC works, how queues work, what the general structure is? Okay. So what features do people want? Automatic fixes or RC bugs. Debbie to store it <laughs> being a by hand. So there's actually code for that that um, Colin Watson I think wrote for Ubuntu, yeah. which isn't actually active under Debian. Ah, uh, now we have a non-DD staff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I leave the room, my chair's taken, which is... You didn't get a chair last time. Well, what do you want more? Beer or a chair? <laughs> well, I prefer beer to be on this side. It's too bad, because I was going to argue my chair and exchange for the beer. <laughs> 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 That'd be good, well, it's not a good idea. <laughs> Um, you know okay. where to get them, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> is this about installer approach? Or? Yeah, yeah. Install, Debian installer not being a by hand. Yeah. So, so another thing is, we uh, we have the issue that if a package goes to new, it won't come back to PU new afterwards. Right. So, and there's a similar problem with the um, security updates. Yeah, but all, all this queue okay. sorting, let's call it queue sorting somehow. Let's not call it quick sort. <laughs> what was the, the issue about the install? DI is a bit What features do you want? You have to, DI is all by hand, you have to bug somebody to process yeah. it after you go to install the code. So I've been working on it, but it's not really finished yet. <laughs> well, not you anymore, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So somebody has to bug somebody. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a library simple patch somewhere, which could go in. Just doing getting packages into new or some other queue that needs to wait. If it loses packages, uh, if it loses symbols, where stuff depends on. Or basically, if the library symbols change, it needs that's in that's processing. And forcing that at the back level. So, um, what was the patch? Did you Mark say there's a patch? Yes, there is a patch. Mark and I did it. But it is not published yet. It's only on this laptop or so. Nah, Mark has it too. <laughs> <laughs> This is sounding less and less published. <laughs> um, okay, so that does so that 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 file as a, as a bug report, right? Mm. Well, it's, that's a reasonable place to keep every architecture. It's on a hidden machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, I don't know if we want to sidetrack into this too much, but uh, your, that, pack, that particular patch includes some method for developers to override so DAX check. There is some method for a developer to do, deliver the override DAX check if they want to. If they if they say yes, these symbols changed, but it's because upstream didn't export them as part of the API, so let it go anyway. There is an option to override that. If not, that can be added. But as, as I, I would like to see that in place before it gets deployed. <laughs> uh, I would like well, to see it before it gets deployed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Does it store any metadata somewhere or just checks the current version live? On the, the last version of the patch I've seen has just looked at the old and the new stuff on okay. the of course available and so so decided based on that. What, what, what does it consider the old stuff? Does it just look at the data in the archive or is it cached somewhere? Or? In the uh, archive. In the archive, what we had. And that will only uh, be active for unstable blocks? Should be. No, it, should, it should be. Uh, it, it, it doesn't check, it just put, uh, puts the package into new, where someone can decide what to do. Okay. So I think we could just activate it for all the suites, why not? So is there also a patch for examine package which will report the information? Like the explanation of why it's new? We had a patch for the new using that short what is going on. Another patch that I would like to have seen to duck applied is this uh, mail whitelist patch. The what? Mail whitelist. Is it mail is only sent to people in a whitelist. Every archive except the Debian one that once duck has some mail whitelist patch. So if you upload a package that's maintained by you or so, you don't get a mail about it. Huh. So you can't spend... But that's a configuration options. option. So if the configuration option is not set, it will just behave like now. It would just be nice to have that patch in the it's original dark archive. It's helpful like in Backports Org or Debian AMD64 archive. So you, you don't want to spend every maintenance you, you, You're not saying that it should be in the archive, you're just saying the patch should be... In the, the patch should be applied to, 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 to... But it shouldn't be uh, activated, but the patch should be there. Um, about the warning spam. Yeah. Back to this uh, new symbol uh, thing. Is there already a tool at this moment that you can supply to the devs, which is like installable by developers, which will report on new symbols? I like that would be so. very useful for people that before they can upload, they can actually check. Oh, that would be yeah. a very small. Uh, Steve, I've seen so it just be the logic of it could be in that script, for example. I still think it should be part of DH uh, mix was. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually, I think it should. I think it should be a lot of build dot dev that has a broken ABI. Let alone upload it. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> but, but actually, we have currently these proposals for for, this, uh, for the smaller for more granular dependencies, which would include changes to the ABI. So I think we're on a good path to that. Where is he? You don't necessarily know. What the, the old list of symbols was at the time. Sorry, I didn't. You don't necessarily necessarily know the list of symbols from the previous package at the time. You have to My notion is that it would be a it would be a manifest that's included as part of the Debian metadata in the package. And so if there's a discrepancy with this manifest, that this is so off topic for this bot. Let's talk about this later. <laughs> I'm happy with it sets a good song to you. If we automatically also reject like empty packages that have this as only changes very often. We name the package in the control file, but forget all the other files and we don't have files in there. Happens. But the check the empty packages will really be a good option. Um, so <laughs> so, so I can't still have a change log file, but that's it. Related but perhaps slightly simpler is the idea of um, automatically going through new for um, slightly different kernel updates. So like the dash five dash six API changes, which I think Don Trace was going to suggest in his wacky ideas bar. Um, but so I guess the question for that would be working out how to set a policy for what packages are similar enough and under what circumstances are similar enough to, to override or not the other. And I don't really have a feel for what that would be. Yeah, okay. Maybe like an like expression. Maybe like an expression like uh, Linux dash... Uh, uh, but for the kernel, yeah, yeah. For, for, so for shared libraries in general, I mean, you're changing the number at the end, but you also want to check that, that Library mostly stays the same. Otherwise, 
one interim solution might be of the modifying the actually sorting that's being used for new processing, like sort the uh, source package of the same name already exists above all the others. I actually um, submitted a patch for that. That would <laughs> help me that <laughs> if I have a lot of packages in new waiting, I go through all of them and just accept those that have name changes or new design or something. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's sorted above or not. And yeah, uh, how about I, I don't know what, what you're trying to prevent here, but if you're trying to prevent unexpected uh, name changes, you could only accept the name change if in the change log it says change the API or like put the magic phrase in the change log which will go in, pass it through new, which will prevent the maintainer unexpectedly building a library or name change and have it accepted. Those will be blocked. But those that the maintainer actually knows, he wants uh, some main change will go in. Well, but sorting changes need to be done by by purpose anyways because it, so don't don't get another by the package uh, just by the building with a new so, so name. And it's it's too fragile for abuse, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, keying on it's contents of change logs doesn't sound really like a, uh, a bad taste in the yeah. mouth. And you're talking about changing the package name, but I think it's much more common to change the son name without changing the package name. Yes, yeah. and that should be auto automatically really checked. Yeah, <laughs> as an addendum, can we reject packages that change dev package names for no reason? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't throw those anew, just throw them out. How about a reject? <laughs> One feature I talked about in the release team meeting, but I didn't know receive much feedback on is the possibility to for the release team to block certain packages from being uploaded to unstable because they can fuck up for example increase time libraries that bump SH lift or doing a big transition going to unstable to testing some library breaking it or any package breaking it so uh, block them yeah that was you you were saying that um, implementing a library freeze for Lenny, you want to do a freeze of all libraries, and that you said that, that should be implemented at the DAC level. Have you talked to him about that? No, we didn't. Okay, um, so, so for, for the that's two different questions, however. In theory, for the testing, for the release stuff, the release managers in theory only need to touch testing, and I think we're pretty much limited to that so far. Uh, so I don't like you, you don't actually have any control over what goes in unstable. You can no. suggest people no. not to upload yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. But you only actually have, well, when you have fairly complete control over what goes into testing. Yeah. Um, so blocking uploads to unstable would be something fairly new, which yes. well, I would consider just a power grab if it only came from the release management team and without well, it, it other people be. saying that, yeah, that's a sensible sort of thing to do because unstable is kind of the playground where people do get to upload whatever they want and mm -hmm. screw stuff up and whatever. Well, I, I can imagine because I, I follow those discussions on release fairly regularly and sometimes you see, oh my god, this was just uploaded and so we are set back a week again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were almost there and it, yeah. I think it makes sense to say, okay, let's freeze unstable now for two days so we can finalize the last two things and uh, push this huge transition through without being bothered by unexpected stuff. But it, it is... Uh, so, I have an argument to be made for just use experimental for things like that in the last month or two. Sorry for yes. less? An argument, you could make an argument that you should really just be using the experimental for that Absolutely. sort of thing a few months before the release. So. Yeah, the question is, are the maintainers that are doing the uploads paying attention to what yeah, people and are telling them yeah, about if, what should or If they're not paying attention and they get blocked, then suddenly they start paying attention and can get told upload an experimental and yeah. prove it works and then okay we'll unblock it or something. In, in case one does such blocks it should so the check message should also contain please use experimental for now and we'll remove the blocks in a few days or so. Oh, yeah. So what are we only talking at the very end of the freeze or are we talking for little transitions during the We have two different topics. Yes. The one is for for this big transitions where we just say oh please two days none of these packages please please yeah. please 
Okay. So it's a one thing. So yeah. that, that's basically the, the, the big tool chain uh, transitions. And so what do you mean by these packages? Ones that depend on others? That ones that are thing, tied or? to a significant library tree. Right. Usually the cases are... Well, like, how, how do you want to specify them? As at least them. Uh, uh, so would be a list. Yeah, yeah. We would, you know, you want to extract it based stuff. on Britney and or whatever. Right? Yeah. And then be the list. Okay. I, I have that list. list. And what's the second thought? The other thing is, but I'm, I'm not so sure if it's really need a block here. We said, said at the end of the release cycle, we would like, to, or we are we're going to make a library freeze. Uh, even if you say you do a library freeze, I think it, sh it should just, or at least my current idea is to just do it in the freeze file. And, uh, and if a maintainer uploads in his own name, uh, I hope to be uh, informed by the, the FTP team in time, and otherwise crew back to the maintainer. Well, it, it only needs an update of the shell loops, that's not going to go into testing the yeah. problem. Yes, but the problem is, well, it's only it could even be worse. But I think, right. I think it would be, in, or I currently expect it's enough to say when we freeze it, because even though maintainers usually don't, uh, even the maintainers who don't see Debian developer nouns, you should notice if the package is frozen somehow. Um, yes, as Stephen knows, that not all does. I know some special exceptions of that. <laughs> but so I don't think that as of now I would start. Well, I, I wouldn't start asking for some duck changes for that. But that might happen that we notice. Oh, this in that package. Um, it would really be better to not or to check it in duck until the release or so. Uh, but Actually, that's it's also a sign that this maintainer perhaps would need to go to should should better go to the zoo and M again. So <laughs> yeah, basically I, it is. But I, I remember one new uh, discussion we had for Edge about uh, one of the GTK uh, Libsor Directory or, or something like that, which yeah. they threatened to upload for a long time, and we was which was going to break a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what this one. They all run together. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> um, sorry, so can someone read out the IRC because I'm not paying attention to it when this stuff said. Um, so it's just an IRC in this channel is just about the patch for the rivalry assembly stuff. Right. It's and makes it Mark has made a different Oh okay, way. excellent. In his home duck lives in the patch. Uh, so I think uh, I, so, some of the points just raised uh, are vaguely familiar from the uh, <coughs> discussion about the introduction of testing. So uh, uh, the, the possibility to block certain updates from happening, so it's basically shifting a part of testing into unstable and uh, telling people to use experimental as the new unstable. Uh, so there is a suggestion here in IRC tools that similar making experimental a full suite and not only an extension to unstable. Um, I have other suites that I consider more important. So if we start with full suites, I would like first to consider or where I really where it really could be useful is for something like a post updates to make it a full suite. I consider that far more exported than experimental, because then we could even do the removals before we do the points like this. Um, but even that, I don't think has a priority. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's a challenge either. So, I don't. Uh, uh, what I'm thinking about is uh, whether it's possible to, uh, to have a sort of a staging areas in experimental where, where you can uh, upload some, something that breaks uh, uh, some ABI or something like, to experimental. And, uh, okay, so staging areas is a different thing. Um, if we just finish up with the blocking of stuff first, okay, it's a, like yeah, it's a technical difference. Sure. So, who is offended at the idea of having their uploads to unstable blocked by the list managers? Sure. Uh, 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 <laughs> of course, now the 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 list wizard answers the room, nobody would say anything. <laughs> Well, you Sorry. So, so well, once you have a special exemption, and then they'll quiet him up, and then the rest of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> once, once, you, once you're not face to face, and you've just got email in front of you, who will then be offended? <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, some some IRC, some IRC mix come to my mind. But 
Yeah, I, I know of a few people who are offended by that. I as don't think they have too, let us talk to them. Okay, and but presumably we want to keep these keep the limits that they're that they're adding to two, three days, not more than a week yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Just for very, very, very short times. Okay. Yeah. For f f the finishing touches, touches of the session. Except for the pre-release one that could last yeah. longer in theory. For for libraries. Right, but that's still but that's, that's uh, planned to be advisory yeah. rather than necessarily. Uh, it will be it's planned to be staff advisory. Yeah. Uh, but, but of course, but if you create such a mechanism, it would be nice if if we could use this mechanism. With agreement of FTP masters to say, well, we want now this and that library definitely blocked because we are, for example, I can remember libpng last time. It, it ended good because we told the maintainer what he should upload and he did, did exactly what we said. But if that maintainer would have then decided to well, make a fuss about it, it might have been a case <laughs> where I would have liked such a check. Yeah, well, if we're talking conflicts between developers, that's not. That's really something that has to be handled on a case by case. So yes, of course, but on a case by case decision, nothing else. One thing I will mention, as far as, um, and this doesn't detract from the benefits of actually doing this, but I will point out that there have been cases where we were doing a transition and we were trying to get all the packages together, and even if we identify all the packages that we think are involved in the transition, and if we put blocks on new sourceful uploads of those packages to let them build, some of the missing builds may get caught because some other library it depends on gets re-uploaded with a new SO name and approved through new in that stage, or new slids at that oh, stage. Yeah. Um, and we've been blindsided by that yeah. before, and it's very hard to, it's very hard to, to You cannot to present everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so. it is possible to go, okay, these are all the things we're missing, this is what the, the libraries it builds against are, and, and tell all the maintainers not to upload, or freeze all those libraries too, but at that point it's just like, I don't know, it's, it, it gets yeah. to be a little bit much. Yeah. But it's, well, it's the same with the I. Uh, you're close to release and then suddenly, for no reason at all, some package. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's difficult. But you're not watching. It's difficult because you don't think about these things. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you're never expecting people to upload these to libraries. They just do. That's, that's part of the problem. Um, uh, so another thing, has everyone noticed that, like, um, FTP master happens every, or pulses happen every 12 hours now? Okay. Do they? Well, <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> I hoped it was videotaped. <laughs> well, as long as it wasn't facing towards the audience, then I think that's okay. <laughs> um, So, one of the other things that at least Joey wants to have happen is to have that happen more often. Yes, I have one idea for that. I'm not too sure if that is a good idea, so, but we could perhaps discuss about it. To make the, the, the deinstall signs itself happen very often, something like every whatever, three hours. But don't do so many mirror pushes, but just because uh, there is two mirror, mirror pushes per day, like we have now, and have something la, uh, like have, have some uh, archives that just contains all the new uploaded stuff for 36 hours. But having that also mirrored so that not FTP master is hit hard. I must say that I see in practice only very limited benefits of the multiple runs. Mostly because they are only useful for the architecture that gets uploaded actually and not for the architects that get auto built. Because the build the administrators have the habit of just doing uh, once signing once a day or something like that, and they are not about to change that. Mm -hmm. They are okay. not going to be signing uh, every two hours because that would just break their other work yeah. during the day. Yeah. I, I, I so, uh, and with people starting to spread over, uh, especially AMD64 and i386 uh, uploads more and more, yeah. I doubt that you're going to get uh, any real be benefits from. Uh, more frequent than the two times a day that we have now. Well, I think the two times already were well worse. They were quite yeah. helpful. The two times a day is, is, is nice. Yeah. Uh, I, but especially I would be very much against uh, additional mirror pushes because mirror pushes do break uh, things while they're happening. Yeah. Yeah, if we do more, I think we should restrict the number of mirror pushes still to two and just have the new packages 
Some are available for people who can't wait for another two hours. Yeah, they're available. So, yeah, but not, there's not another package as far. So, 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 so selective yeah. pushes could be an option. But okay, uh, so we're really talking packages file for incoming not that developed. Which will be included, then, yes. A lot of people are then going to actually put it in their sources list mm. and going to kill whatever. Mm. Yeah, but it's then you, can, you need well, to build like just file on ftp.dev.go slash incoming instead of whatever. You just need to, yeah, so to push it somewhere. Yeah, so one mirror. Yes, then it, it's, done, it's, it's, not, it's an incoming, it's no longer run on ftp master, but on some mirror that is pushed every 15 minutes or whatever. Um, does it make sense to increase the frequency only during specific periods of time, like during that comp? <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have, I, I, should, I, should, I think the, the top problem is still the same, that you yeah. don't get builds on it frequently enough, so... Yeah. But just, just because, like, you know, I, people create things at that point and they want other people to try them the next day, even if they have the same architecture, but still they could get, you know, other... Okay, they could give them the devs, of course, but... Oh, well, like, hearing about devs, comp, it would, I think we should think in the future that we should have a local archive for people to upload to a DAC that's running here so they got they can do stuff and co collaborate and stuff too. I think, that would okay. be a, I think yeah, Joey's a, main yeah. argument has been I yeah. want to get fixes in uh, yeah. quicker. Okay. Uh, once we spot so something that's seriously broken so. in, in the installer or, or, or something, he just wants to be able to get fixes loaded and have that available for the next test runs or whatever. How long uh, is Brittany running these days with the uh, with the image manager slowing everything down. <laughs> it's it's been taking several hours, three to four hours I think. What? So that's yeah, quite it's is it Brittany takes about three, several, or, three or four hours right now. What did you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to to complete a run it's taking several hours right now because of you know, the usual. Um so that that kind of puts a limit on how often we can try to cycle things if Brittany has to be part of that. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, but it used to be way faster, by the way. Oh yeah, it's because yeah. um, it's something something's uninstallable and far too complicated. Uh, yeah, okay, it could be that's the moment. <laughs> Image it's magic is one of them. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but it's, 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 <coughs> it's still only running for one hour. Mm. Okay. Well, it's running until eleven fifty-two. Uh, oh, it's it's running for one for one hour and fifty. So okay, it's running for two hours now. We were already at least ten minutes before. Oh yeah, it was very quick before. Um, yeah, two I hours now. So it's before the release. You know. Yeah. <laughs> when people weren't uploading anything. <laughs> okay, now with this two hours, so if, even if we had some padding, we, we, we couldn't be more or make more of a deal with boys than four hours. At yeah. maximum, technically. I thought it would be comfortable doing it more than that. I personally would think every six hours, so for a day would be obvious next step. Um, there is another wish from IRC. Ah, yeah, what was that? The FTP masters will keep the bazaar repository updated. <laughs> 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 That's really heavy. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a nice dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can cron that. You okay. could outsource it. You still need a description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The problem is that update they changes, changes, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, committing, com committing stuff to the repo that they've uh, deployed without giving a change log or anything for it. So you could, you could just write the change log, adjusting stuff with FTP master, <laughs> catching up on FTP master, something like that. Um, so yeah, the Merkle repository is um, up to date, but still not checked in. So. <laughs> Features, you know, I have one because uh, I need to get the tags in the tags in the packages file uh, without possibly annoying FTP masters too much. I will be able to generate an update a week at least yeah. of the tag overrides. So I think before you were here, um, someone was met, a friend or Andy yeah. was mentioning um, uh, automatic by hand processing and Debian installer. So that would also be automatic by hand processing with dev tags. Okay, that would be great. But, but dev tags isn't 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 dev tags a bit different from DI? Yeah, yeah, yes, it's, it's, it's totally it's different. Um, yeah, it's still by hand, but you need uh, scripts for every type of yeah. by hand, yes. separate scripts. So um, 
you need a way to identify which ones should be run. I, I guess that should yeah. be a, it can a be tech like in the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's just the type. Uh, you, just make, you make something like... Uh, well, the, the types are always by hand. By hand slash something. Or pseudo yeah. hair in the... The DI should have done the checks wrong and smaller yeah. instead of by hand. And, yeah. and, and, the, and there's several right. more. You also have a uh, few uh, of the documentation packages, I think, have uh, by hand. Yeah, but uh, we say start to copy for that reason. Yeah. Is developers reference still there? No, yeah. developers have yeah. done the the how to. Uh, policy, I think. How to. Yeah. The release notes don't at the moment. No, we we take the tarball. We don't okay. publish them online FTP anymore. That's right. Okay. But perhaps if we, if if we, if the auto processing works really well, we could perhaps go back to making all this tarball as a part of the build, just as an idea. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know. If it's yes, it, it it could happen, but you have to have two things. You have to have a need to publish them as well. Uh, <coughs> yeah, and as, as, as in. I think there are a lot of yeah. packages that could that could um, gain from or having such things out of the, the, the thing with release notes, of course, is that it's not uploaded as a package at all. Uh, yeah. So for the release notes, if you would want to process it that way, you would need uh, a special package type that can be accepted without an actual pack package. So, so, so yeah, that's all works. That's by hand. Uh, yeah. That's by hand. You yeah, can upload but, but purely by hand, no source. Yes, yes. you can yeah. do it. You can do it. Yeah. You can yeah. upload by hand yeah. just. Anything. Um, so I have brought a tarball with yes. yeah. stuff inside. It just hasn't been processed by hand yet. <laughs> <laughs> so what what release notes? It, release notes isn't in the distribution at all. No, it's it's, on it's only published yeah. on the website and uh, included on the CD, on the CD uh, but it, based on the website build. But it might be nice to, to publish the tarball as also as part of the as tar, or just put them as tarball on the on the FTP mail. Uh, yeah. That we could do. The reason it's not packaged is basically because it's mostly prepared too late, uh, yeah. and, and you want to keep it up to date. Uh, it, it's no use to have a stale release notes package in uh, in the archive. People should go to the website, basically. Yeah. Um, okay. So staging areas. Uh, did anyone actually look at Robert Collins's video talk? Pardon? Anyone? Uh, Rob Collins did a talk on uh, release early release often release always mm -hmm. at Linux Compu, which was ended up being mostly about um, getting staging areas so that you create a GNOME staging area and do all the work on getting a new GNOME version done there so that it didn't impact with separate work on KDE or PostgreSQL or MySQL or whatever else. And so whichever one gets ready first gets pushed into unstable and then all the others need to resync with unstable. Mm -hmm. So if suddenly KDE has some packages that use that have some copy libraries coming with it, you can own, then they need to get updated. Otherwise they're obviously not going to have the matching dependencies for unstable, which the aim of which is to kind of desynchronize transitions so that um, they can go into testing more smoothly. Um, that's the, the general idea of having, so does everyone know what I mean when I say suites and components? Does anyone not? <laughs> does anyone I think, think they know what is actually wrong? could, but we don't know if it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's, what's a suite? Can someone give me an example of a suite that's not him or him? Ah, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> No, don't make gun efficient or we will add NM no. questions about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, anyone, because he's going to add NM questions about it. <laughs> so, suites are the collection of packages. In a suite, you can only have one version of any package. So, ah, it says something else I want to change, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think that's going to change. That, that doesn't. That offends my mathematical sensibility. <laughs> uh, components are main contrib non free, so just different ways of separating a suite, which we always do by license. Um, so having staging areas means you want different versions of perhaps the same package compared to one stable and compared to different staging areas. So if you're up, if you're updating um, some application to work with the new GNOME in one staging area, you might want to update it separately to work with the new PostgreSQL in a different staging area. So that basically means dynamic 
Creation of Suites. Um, creation of Suites is currently a completely manual thing, so edit that comp by hand, edit that comp by hand, edit the PostgreSQL database by hand, hope that they all make, all, they all make sense, try and remember to commit them to the buzzer repository, <laughs> and make sure you create the right directories for app to use on the archive, and then you've got your own, then you've got your new suite. So that doesn't happen, but is kind of what's required for the general idea of staging area. But um, if, if you make it less generic, it could work without so much effort. Less generic? If, well, if you say, well, you could, you could upload your GNOME yeah, I mean, to yeah. experimental and just have everything built, and if everything is built and it works fine for you, you just transition the source packages to unstable, schedule a billion in use, and that's it. Um, so that works as long as you don't actually have two different transitions for the same package, which you often do. That, um, no, that, 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 that works as long as you say we can build everything again in unstable if we if it works or so we just yeah. we just polish the packages and experiment and then build them in unstable. If that's enough, it works easily. If that's not enough, then it's hard. AJ's idea is a bit more uh, extended. He basically wants to have uh, different development teams uh, be able to work separate without being bothered by uploads by the others. And uh, so, so, so you would upload to a specific <coughs> uh, staging area. Yeah, and this is specifically for things that aren't really ready to be released yet. So okay. the the 2.17 sort of GNOME stuff or the or the or zero KDE stuff. Yeah. Well, the other thing it lets you do is if you do have what what's the term for these things? These individual staging areas. Staging areas. Is that if you've got a separate package packages file for each of these staging areas, you can set it in your app sources list and pull in automatically yeah. from it if you're working on yeah. that particular task without having to worry about whatever else is in unstable or whatever else is in experimental looting. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the important uh, difference between uh, between a normal suit and the staging area would be that in the staging area the only uh, the sources that are different are, are those for, for the packages uh, that, that uh, you actually want to build against, like the new GNOME or something like that. And you also want to have binary packages for, uh, for everything that depends on it, but you don't want another, uh, another version of the source. That's true. Yeah. But just something that that's a duck currently the country they do to have one source with multiple version, multiple nonlinear versions. Yes, you can. What do you mean? Uh, you need to have different suites for them, but you can have yes, um, but it, it's not one in uh, uh, actually one in actually, actually the problem is that <coughs> since they are not uh, no longer necessarily that you, well, what the word new as the current is, uh, uh, have mentioned to each relation doesn't really mean anything anymore because which package is new as the one that's for the GNOME transition or the one for the KDE transition? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but we need to. But what uh, version numbers do they get then? The binaries? Uh, you can, you can wow. only merge one transition at, uh, at a time. Yeah. Yeah, es essentially, each, each staging area builds, uh, uh, builds uh, all, uh, all dependent packages for, uh, for the transition you, uh, it is responsible for. And then you say, I want to merge this, uh, this staging area. Then you move all, all the binaries from this area and all the other staging areas um, have to adapt to that. But, but if you have a package that's in multiple staging areas at one time because it needs to be rebuilt against two different libraries that are being staged, yeah. each of those binary packages would need to have a unique binary yes. version number because that is not going to, and the archive doesn't allow you to have two packages with the same file name, basically. So probably the staging area name would have yeah. to be in the... It's part of the binary yeah. version. Mm -hmm. okay. for, for packages that are just built for that reason okay. uh, and, and don't have a source. Okay. Because yeah. that, that's what you're talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah. but it, it starts to get complex now. It's a, it's yeah, a, it's a, it's a, now we need, yeah, now we need naming schemes that are, are not going to... Okay. And we need to expand our binary naming schema a bit for it. Because plus B1, plus B2 isn't, isn't enough anymore. We actually would want, for the experimental staging areas, we would want binary version numbers that sort earlier than the plus B1. So yes, we would. Because we would want to be able to use the regular binary, the regular bin and viewing when that staging area finally goes to. You could you could do it something like plus B one. Just use the uh, higher plus B number than what's in any of the staging areas. Oh well, they were talking about somebody said that the staging area name would be part of the binary revision number. It would sound cool, 
because uh, it's the best way to not mix it up. I mean, you could just, I don't know. You can make it last be uh, something, and how this character called English is minds less than anything. So we just take the next by B number, and it says lesser, and then whatever it is. Uh, okay. Would the Bill Demon cope with it? No. Okay. No, but the Bill Demon. <laughs> The Bill Demons don't do anything with experimental today anyway. Uh, so the, the, the official ones would challenge. be inexperimental. Okay, and so not built for many architectures. But well, wouldn't that mean be, that for all there, would be, there would need to be separate building yeah. stuff done right. because, particularly because you need to make sure that you're getting the, some of the libraries from unstable and some of the libraries from the right staging area. Yeah, and you basically need a separate one build. Right, for, for every staging area. Yeah. Yeah. You want one of them for each staging area? Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's not too hard. You can do that by split. They, they don't have to do the whole archive, so it's... it's <laughs> no, but... You want to be able to apply special hacks in yeah. the staging area. They, they right, but, but, but I see we need a lot of more manpower for no. managing these additional no. vulnerabilities. But, 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 but it's not too hard. At the moment you would, because you'd need extra manpower to do all the build days, all the one build databases, and the archive, because there's no scripts for any of it, so you so need to go through all, all of those, add the new staging area, delete any staging areas that are no longer necessary, and they, make sure it's all correct by hand, which is why we don't do it. Basically, if, if you do such a concept, the concept would, in my opinion, include some, some way to auto that one of the suites, because otherwise, yeah, sure. you don't do it otherwise. No. Other. Yes. And it's, it's not it's not so hard to take the mana build suite if you if you know what to do by the way. So this is not going to happen yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, this is a long shot. Someone then. stays up all night hanging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Christy, do you have three things that I can have? It is a very cool idea, uh, and it would make uh, experimental a lot more usable for uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, and there have been various ideas that were tossed around, particularly on IRC, about how you go about moving these things into unstable once you're done staging. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, if you upload a new source, if you move the source across and rebuild, or if you just move the source and binaries across. Yeah, which I think moving is really not what you want to do. I think you want to do a clean rebuild against unstable. Yeah, but but, but if you say you make just, just to prevent any accidental mistakes. Well, you're gonna, you, you may have or, you may have other transitions that have already started, yeah. and you may be reverting a transition that's in place that's that's in progress, yeah. and you're just if you're moving stuff around, and it's better to just rebuild against yeah. whatever's in unstable. Yeah, but, but but you, but one advantage of such an of such a staging error, uh, let's say two advantages of the staging error. The so one is that you can just say, well, we are making all the source code changes that we need, so that we know it works. That you can most do even on base of the current experimental, because you just need to group packages correctly. You can you can probably do it with a few extra indices. Uh, the other thing would be to say, well, we do the complete staging and move the stuff over, and then it's ready for testing transition, which would be a cool thing, way more effort, but it would be really, really, really cool if it works. Like I said, though, you run into the problem of having to manage if you if you are doing this with multiple staging areas running yes. at the same time. You have to. It, 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 you have to rebuild the whole staging area anyway yeah. before you can push it to unstable if the two are related. And then, and then when this one goes in first, this one you can't just push to unstable yeah. because and you're going to revert a library transition that this one already committed to unstable. Uh, actually, I think if you want to go for the complex version, uh, it's a lot of things to be uh, to be sorted out. I fully agree that there are a lot of things to be sorted out for that. But still, I think it would be great if. If one can keep the source, uh, the binaries, the course that would reduce the roundabout time it needs in, in unstable. Otherwise, if yeah, you if you rebuild everything, you can just upload the source and then you are there. The, the alternative approach would be to to do it in the staging area and then just before syncing it, rebuild everything within the staging area and then build it across. But that means yeah. you have to have a really solid built yes. uh, yeah. network yeah. for it does. for the staging areas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what's, what's your upload target going to be listed as in those cases? Is, there going to be some, is anything going to complain about that? If you take well, everything minors. would be because the <laughs> stuff doesn't exist. But well, I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's no worse than uploading stuff to unstable and having it here at desk and stable. And you can, yeah, it's a lot of fun things you can load it to as today with upload targets. Uh, actually, if, 
It is like experimental for a group of packages in which a team of people cooperate. Wouldn't build demons start to become really essential because the yes. known people, some of them are on i 3 6 some on AMD64. Now, no one uses experimental, so it's not an issue that this package doesn't exist on AMD64 <coughs> because I wouldn't want to use it anyway. But if a group of people actually has to cooperate, there should actually be some. Yes, you it, know, it would be a lot of time. Right. That could go to yeah. support. Um, you could say that so staging areas only covers a, a subset of the architectures, though. Which is could, those yeah. that could cope. Yeah. You don't load ARM with staging areas. But and, I mean, you might have some staging areas support ARM because they yeah. are embedded stuff that they really care about, and Ex others not because. Except if you really want to move stuff from experimental yes. straight into uh, unstable without rebuilding. If you want to do that, you will, will need to full build the. Although that network. is trouble to set the upload target, mm -hmm. because you need to change that. I mean, upload target are not really a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you do such a proposal, the best. Uh, um, so, just to. Uh, Uh, well, in fact, uh, in the procedure of um, uh, uploading to staging, uh, synchronizing between uh, different developers, uh, and uh, once you are done, uh, you know that uh, every everything is fine. Uh, you need to uh, push uh, this, uh, this package to uh, to unstable. Uh, you have a procedure, and in the procedure, uh, the last step is to uh, take all the package of experimental and put it in unstable. But just before, you build for all architecture and do other check more do off yeah. check the, the uh, issue before uh, going from the staging area to yeah. and uh, I, I really agree with, with him because I think that uh, for example uh, we can have uh, MD64 and uh, and uh, PPC for example uh, because uh, developers working uh, just are working on this you just define a subset and when you are, once you are done you just well, It's an idea, but you push a button to ask yeah. uh, the full rebuild of the staging area, which is uh, ready, to check that everything is fine, and in particular that it builds on all architecture, on all architectural program, and uh, maybe it's just a, a way of defining the solution. So, so basically, what you're saying is you should have the option of saying, uh, please activate these right. architectures for this staging area yes. at some point. And then before uh, you push it into unstable, you say, okay, now is the point that we activate all architectures yes. and maybe even use a different set of build demons uh, for that final preparation <coughs> stage. Yeah. Yeah. Next to that, also, next to that, I was thinking if, if it could be useful to interface with Lucas Nussbaum, uh, huge <laughs> network of things and uh, parallel for staging areas, It could tell you this stage if this staging area would be merged into unstable today, this would be the outcomes. Mm -hmm. As a parallel yeah. thing, you could have, you know, reality checks of a staging area. But actually, we, we did we did say already. We uh, we, ha we had this, we did a commit it's a libpng change the last one. We had the new version of the libpng used for test building all the, the, the build dependencies and see what breaks. Right. Right, that you could do that more, than that. more automatic. Yeah. It was a very little helpful feature to show before yes. the release to unbreak stuff. Yeah, the, the, the big problem is uh, if, if you have multiple transitions going on and, uh, and you want to merge uh, one of the transitions back into unstable, you, you don't want to uh, rebuild uh, all, of it, uh, all of it at this point because you uh, want to have this, uh, this merging period as short as possible. Yes. As I said, you need to rebuild before, and basically in, in the moment where you say we do the final rebuild, you can't merge anything else in unstable anymore. Yeah, the, Unless yeah. you, you decide yeah, to make, make another... You have to delete the transitions in a sequence. Which At is least the merging, you need to make the merge in a, in a sequence. And yeah. Yeah. So who's going to handle that? Is that going to be a release management job? Can I feel. You? So <laughs> I was going to say, how does the dating drug with test integration? You move one stationary to unstable, and then you wait until that be grace to testing before emerging the next staging area or I, I think it would still need 10 days in 
unstable normally because you're going to get a much broader yeah, yeah, testing yeah, base testing no. from outside of your oh, so development group. You may well have if you've got a staging yeah. area that says this is the yeah, unique known. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to have the, the, the yeah. user for all architectures. Yeah. You're much like more likely to have use a larger user base for all architectures when it's actually yeah. unstable. Uh, talking about the fact that uh, we need to choose uh, which staging area will be managing with unstable and uh, in which order. Maybe, in fact, you can just uh, submit the proposition to manage your staging area. Once all is reviewed, it's okay, you know that uh, you're, you're ready to do it. But in fact, you give you um, 10 days, for example, and uh, in these 10 days, everyone can submit the same uh, <coughs> staging area manager proposition. And um, you just choose if. Yeah. You, you compute, in fact, the, uh, the dependency between the different staging era and which one will impact all the other. Uh, it's not so complicated, I think, because, for example, if you got a staging era with uh, uh, something like uh, Objective Camel, it doesn't uh, impact a lot of things. It's really small. But uh, with Python, for example, you got something much more big. If we and Python uh, submit a uh, measure staging area into unstable, uh, I think Python will go uh, before uh, Objective Kernel. And mm -hmm. in this way, we can uh, choose the, the correct order in order to make the less effort for every uh, people working together in every different staging area to merge things. Uh, it's just a problem. Yeah, I think it's really need to automate this because you can, like, apply some common sense mostly some life saving airs is going to be like definitely in parallel. Yeah. Right. I, I think okay, so I think that would be uh, step two then. Yeah step so one I, would I be think memory merge first and step two is automatic merging then. Uh, I'd say we'll probably discuss this enough for the minute because yeah. We're, we're going to need a lot of a lot of okay. actual implementation stuff. Yeah. So. I have another topic I would like to see in Duck. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically what happens today if someone or well, if someone uploads an architecture all package, it will just appears in all architectures, of course. Yes. And if you have mixed <coughs> between architecture all and any packages, is all package appears in all seeds, but the end package only after the build has been done. Yes. And that breaks us the architect architectures. So the idea That's would be... That's what makes unstable unstable. Yes. Yes. But the idea would be just to keep the all packages for the not yet built seeds with the old version. Yeah. That um, makes sense. So that, that does make sense, and it's been on the deck to do list for God knows how long. I know, the, the problem <laughs> but I still would like to see it. The problem with doing it is getting the um, getting the behavior correct so that... Um, God, I can't even remember, it's been that long. Um, getting the behavior correct so that uh, it will update the all package when the, when the any package is built, and... No, actually, that bit's easy. It's just that it needs dependency um, calculation of some description yep. in DAC, mm -hmm. which it isn't there at all at the moment. Um, the challenge is if you've got an architecture or package that depends on an architecture um, specific architecture package, so isn't available on, on ARM, say, um, then in that case you kind of would like the architecture or package not to appear on ARM at all. That makes sense to anyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, getting that to work right is a lot more difficult if I forget the circumstances. Uh, but, 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 but <laughs> actually, one of the preconditions for that was that we don't have null bytes anymore for the source package. I think we are there yet mostly. The yeah, source version. I, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> If you need the dependency calculations in DAC, does it make sense to leverage the French advanced technology on dependency calculations? The what technology? The, the, the very advanced technology about oh. dependency calculations that the French have. Uh, they yes. do all sorts of things. Uh, into a, like a separate tool that you can call, yes, or is it something you need to have control? That's the only thing that's important, otherwise it's quite fast. I was, I was coming there, or if you need to have yeah. something that you can control as in source code, and, and therefore should be written in a language that's known also south of France. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually the uh, either stuff you just discussed about in IRC. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I think so. That's, that's quite fast. So I think the problem yeah. might have been if you're updating an actual package that's dependent on, on other architectures, but not on the one you're looking at, but it might be after it's built, then how do you know whether but it's I've, updated or not? I, 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 I don't think that you really need to make a dependency check. It's probably even enough if you just say, well, if there are any packages that are older, we just to use the old, uh, old package as long as that's the case. Uh, my, I had worked on patches even once before, but, my, but I uh, had problems to sh uh, ch uh, change the, uh, well, the, uh, the K, uh, how is it called these days? Uh, it's just the, 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 the package that the tire the old version is unstable. Yeah. That was the one where I had some issues with. But probably not too hard, but you need to change that, that uh, comment quite a lot for the, to achieve it. Yeah. Uh, 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 this, this solves the problem where, where a single source package builds uh, architecture any and architecture all yes. packages. Yes. Yeah. This, this doesn't solve the problem where, uh, where a, a certain architecture all package depends on an architecture any package from another source package. Yeah, but I, I mind way less for that case. Yeah. Because it's yeah. a very less common case. Uh, the, 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 the question would be, uh, would, it, uh, would it make sense to have a, 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 sort, a sort of dependency in, uh, uh, declared in the source package that says... Um, I mean, at the point you're worrying about that, you're, you're trying to, I think, trying to get unstable to be too clean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's okay if it breaks from time to time. Just if, it's, if there are ways that make it less often, we, we should take the ways. Yeah. But it will still break sometimes, and so it's, it's unstable. Anyway. I must yeah. say that well, also um, the problem will appear more and more as uh, people switch to uploading AMD64 packages. Uh, because currently only, only people using Core PC see the problem appear. Um, now that AMD64 is more and more common, yeah. uh, I386 people will notice the problem and start to complain. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, they already started to complain. complain. It's, uh, again, it's, um, it's kind of the basic idea behind unstable that if you're using unstable, you're able to do that to, to handle such yeah. temporary breakage. Now, I must say, yeah. I've had One no problems yeah. at, at all dealing with it using aptitude. You just put a package on hold for a while. <coughs> Uh, too much gets removed, or uh, it, it it does it automatically in yeah, most cases. Um, you have one part. Right? Yeah. Ah, but it should use aptitude. Do you have one part of the infrastructure which is the archive, depending on uh, another part of the infrastructure which is uh, the buildings uh, working properly? Yeah. And, uh, well, we could avoid this. Uh, dependency by, by hacking a bit. No, you, you, you always pay the build to a work. Yeah. If the build is not working, and they will be crushed in a few days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, but I'm not so sure. About, but I, of course, it can be improved, and yeah. it would be nice if it could be improved, but if the cost is a huge increase in, in complexity of, of your archive maintenance tools, then you have to wonder if it's worth it. Sure. Uh, yeah, the, the, should I say something? Uh, I don't agree with you because, uh, well, uh, maybe I'm a bit out of date, but uh, when I was reading the Debian policy, uh, I think that uh, you want to have a clean and stable, just as you people where you are working with. So, for example, if you hold a package and that other people in the same team as you don't hold this package, you can get uh, two mm -hmm. packages uh, built on different libraries. It's a problem. Yes, yeah. so, so uh, it's uh, as stable as clean as possible, but it's yeah. not as clean yeah. as possible. Is as that, but that's as that's stable as <laughs> possible for mm -hmm. that a whole team can cooperate on the base of unstable. If we if we break enough unstable, so that people will choose to all package, uh, don't uh, yeah. don't upgrade uh, uh, extra. Just before building my own package, uh, I must uh, build. Uh, I must upgrade it. Okay. You're, yeah. you're, you're okay. Yeah. I but must update, I must upgrade. I, I, I try to stay upgraded as well as much as possible. So I only hold things that are actually broken. I won't yes, hold How do you know that uh, the package you keep on hold uh, using aptitude uh, doesn't won't break? Uh, I'm, I do that because I build things in detail. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. I update people yes. that build. Yes, yeah. is fine um, for this. Yeah. But, uh, well. I agree uh, that uh, Pebula is a good uh, step uh, 
to add uh, building things uh, as cleanly as possible in uh, things. Mm. But, but bas basically, what you're suggesting is to rebuild uh, a source for old architecture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 won't, I won't step in this, into this uh, debate. Uh, it's, mm, no, I don't want to. <laughs> no, I get it. I say that. The basic question is, is Unstable uh, 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 meant to be a, to, uh, a tool uh, for team co uh, cooperation? And I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, that's the case. It's, it's meant to be the, the point where the entire project operates. You know, sometimes teams yeah. will need a point that's a little bit more private so they can do yeah. more damage or whatever. But yeah, that's, uh, that's also my idea. So, so maybe inside the team, if if you're really dependent on having the, the latest and greatest uh, of everything, and if you basically want to have a, a, a repository just for your team that's also, that also has uh, shorter upgrade cycles and so on, because with the, with the, with the current up, uh, uh, with the, uh, with the current um, archive pulls uh, cycles at 12 hours, uh, you still have, you still have uh, the issue coordinating a team, I think. Uh, the the other the other thing is um, well to get to get back to the uh, back to the or, uh, original topic is um, how is this solved for stable at the moment I can I can see that un uh, that we do not want uh, uh, to, to solve it for unstable uh, because it's simply not worth the effort for stable it's solved first of all by testing not letting the broken packages get into testing yeah. and for stable by manually not allowing. Uh, Packages in until they've been built on all architectures, and basically not letting uh, dependency changes that will break other packages in. Yeah, but if if I have a, a, a binary all package, uh, depending on a binary any package, it's not built for a certain architecture. Then it doesn't get accepted into the archive until it is. Um, it is, or if it available on IPv6, the IPv6 binary pack. We don't. Can we pause just a second? Actually, it's, uh, well, could like think of obscuring the packages <coughs> if the dependency check fails. Yes, which yeah, is we a have, pretty, we we that is the most simple and solution. It's somewhat to. hard to implement, but if someone wants to write it because they think it's really easy, mm -hmm. go for it. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I, actually, you should write. Actually, you should say that the code that before it's, it's uh, sub, uh, com uh, committed also needs to be so that you could could take over maintenance <laughs> and also new code. <laughs> <laughs> so binary brain dump isn't enough. We haven't seen the packages that depend on libraries. Well, I thought about like staging that. areas. Because um, I was thinking, you know, like GNOME would affect a thousand packages, KD maybe two, three thousand, uh, a Python staging area, five thousand, uh, a GCC staging area, the whole archive. So how broad does it go? Depends on how much disk space and how fast we can do the builds and how much how good the build the infrastructure is. And, oh. I mean, at the moment, zero is our size. So we can <laughs> but the idea would be to go like as broad as staging area for new version of the tool chain, which means yeah, the entire. In theory, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, okay, so another thing which I don't know if anyone else has put on yet, but I quite like is the idea of some accept time checks that call out to a PU parts. Um, machine or to maybe the grid thing that does rebuild testing or whatever sort of <coughs> test that we want. So it should more at the same time, that should run for the new packages in Chrome. Um, so, so I mean this particularly for any packages that's uploaded, mm -hmm. if there's an automated test we can do on it that it'll fail, then we want to reject immediately rather than getting it into unstable to just get an immediate response back to the maintainer, or as immediate as we can that it's broken, and a fairly clear response that this has to be fixed before we're going to accept the package. Um, at the moment, what we do is we put the packages on unstable, and a few weeks later, or when the release is coming up or whatever, we have people file lots of release critical bugs on them, <laughs> which works, um, but having it not get into the archive in the first place would presumably make the release management job a little bit easier and would make the problems a little bit more obvious. So I think that would be really cool. But uh, it could be interesting to do it before it reaches testing, but if it reaches unstable, like um, the rebuild of the archive, uh, the, the grid rebuild, would take about eight hours if I remember to compose them. 
uh, because that you have to wait for open office to be built on one of the nodes. Or you don't need to, you only try that one package that's being uploaded at that moment. Yeah, like you might not necessarily try, or you might try everything that the package build, that the build depends on the package, um, as long as there's less than 50. And um, OpenOffice.org isn't one of the 50. But I was thinking that, you know, you could do that while the package is unstable, then you would give it 10 days to run, and then... Um, but if you do that, you still straight back to the release critical bug and the maintainer possibly not worrying about the release critical bug for a while and the and so I look possibly having stuff disrupted a transition yeah. that yeah. we yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, because you're looking at this up in the Yeah. It could already have to have set for new packages. Yes. Because we have a lot of packages going on that immediately fail to build. So but then it should run in a cron or something going on on you. The problem with doing it with new packages would be that a lot of these things are based outside the US and we yeah. can't export new packages. But it, 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 should, it, it, it would be enough even, even if they would only run on EC8, only be a little bit on EC8 in 60 most cases. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, should I mean, be, you do it in the US. And by the way, you could export if you, would, if you do first a piece of notification. Then let's build this build and then accept into the archive. Yeah, it needs to be accepted into the archive before we can export it. That, that's the oh way, yeah. That's the way we're doing the export. Well, you can send a notification immediately. Yeah, but it doesn't help because but we're not doing that. I know, which we So it doesn't help because the notification says it's available in the archive, so yeah. <laughs> you must do the both at the same time. I mean, we, we could change it, but it would be a lot of effort. But Isn't the reason? Machine currently fast enough to do the builds itself? No. I don't think we'd want to do builds on reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree that it would be fast enough, but I. Yeah, but you want to use this for the stuff as well. We call a bottleneck again. again. Mm -hmm. but and I was thinking. At the point of the first step, not the third <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was also thinking such automated tests, as far as I know, all view parts and also the build testing project all need manual review at the end to, yes. to, to yeah. mangle the results. And yes, if you, you do that before entering testing, it needs to be fully automated. Yeah. It, it would need to be um, <coughs> a manual selection of the particular error cases that would warrant a rejection, okay. rather than warning cases that we're not quite sure of. And they all need to be and automatically testable. Yeah, and possibly need to be over able to be overridden via a line in the disk or okay. sources or control or whatever. So was UDEP migration already discussed? No. Uh, have you seen the proposal I wrote to the Debian release list uh, no. last month? But, but uh, actually, is that a DAX issue? Of course, I agree that we should fix it. It is part it. of the DAX suite, isn't it? No. no. Sorry? No. It's really part of that. Really so I it depends what the, what the proposal actually is as to where it goes. <laughs> it, it goes only into Blitney. So what's the proposal? Um, uh, uh, no, you so summarize it, I should summarize it. No, 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 that's right. Uh, I need to get my quotes clear. Uh, the proposal is to have basically all UDEPs blocked by default, all source packages that have UDEPs blocked by default, to have uh, some uh, packages in a hints file that can migrate automatically. So basically a generic unblock for any version that's uh, unloaded or blocked. And all others would need an unblock by the DI release manager before any other hints uh, are, are applied. Okay, when you say the DI release manager, you mean the release team? Yeah. No, I mean the DI release manager. You mean the release team? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I think actually we could yeah. perhaps add one or two persons to the, 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 to the release team. I think the release managers need to confer about that yeah, later. Yeah, apparently we the, had the a DI release is, manager. <laughs> 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 the, the problem is that the only person that can judge if yeah. uh, UDAP can be unblocked is the DI release manager yeah. because it, there are undeclared dependencies between it, UDEPs. It would still need to be the DI release manager as a member of the release team. Oh, that's fine with me, but yeah. he's still the DI release manager. <coughs> um, but that, that's just automatic 
addition of the freeze line that's regularly updated for all packages containing new data. Which yeah. seems but it, it's cool. also adding, uh, it, it would also require full uh, dependency checking for your devs, which currently right. doesn't happen. Oh, right. Yes, I see what you mean. But at least no, I don't know. So you also want um, dependency checking so that if you want to freeze one package and it depends on another one, it doesn't go in? Uh, yes. Rather than manually checking that. Yes. So basically, but with full dependency checking, we can get rid of a lot of cases we have currently now blocked with it. Yes. The, I, I, it, please read the mail. I'll, I'll send you the, uh, a link uh, on IRC. Um, yeah. I have identified oh, no. four categories of UDEPs based on why they can and cannot automatically migrate. And, and why a manual process is needed uh, in, in addition to uh, purely the, the dependency checking. So, um, it puts that in ILC by the way, I yeah. think. Yeah. You've put it up already? Okay, good. But by the way, I said a few details I would like to see a bit different, but to generate like a proposal is ugly. Yeah, please reply on the I already did so. You did? Yeah. When? Uh, last uh, last week and then we were in Jülich. <laughs> I haven't seen anything on the mail list. Maybe you got to read it. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a reply, I'm sure. <laughs> I haven't either. I, I will uh, make sure that yeah. I send my mail list for now. <laughs> yeah, my sending. I, I will bounce for my mail archive. Okay, so a couple of the other things I had down were um, uh, doing cup releases. So everyone knows about Joey H's, Joey Hess's cup, constantly usable testing. Um, so doing stronger security support for it, doing um, installable releases for it on a more more frequent and regular basis. Um, my presumption, I guess, is that we'll just need to add an extra suite to the archive that we push testing into just as we more or less would a actual release uh, every now and then? I see, I don't think that's the most a technical issue. Technically I think it's easy, but I really see this is cutting, I still really see the issues that we need to make sure that we could upgrade from one testing version to the next testing ver version. And that's a non severe task. And there's and also the issue, things. and there's also the issue that especially for some installation related uh, bugs, you only see them after packages migrate to testing because basically nobody installs in stable. And so you will need to do installation testing before any cut release. Well, I mean, that, that depends on how usable you actually want that to be. <laughs> Constantly semi usable. I mean, constant means at the same state, not at a really high state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but be a Debian, so it needs to be a high one. Okay. Um, I must say that I'm fairly happy with uh, the beta and RC releases we have done for yes. Debian installer uh, during the Edge lifetime. Yeah. I think they have been usable and they have been sustainable yeah. as well. The, the only thing that sucked uh, was that about oh, a month or so before the next beta would come out, then the old beta was usually unusable. Yes, but you're going to, to keep that anyway because, well, only, well, only, only, for, some, only for some installation methods, by the yeah. way. Uh, for, for CDs, it would still be fine. Yes. Um, and to be honest, CDs. Uh, I don't care that much about netbooting at, at such time because. The way I have been managing the releases, I've tried to keep, keep those periods as short as possible yeah. by basically making sure that uh, the, everything was in place and there were no serious blocking issues before starting uh, the transition and before starting the migration to testing. Uh, while Joey had a different approach, he would uh, migrate UDEPs much more frequently yes. from unstable to testing. So there's also release management. Uh, differences involved. So we'll have to contact the new DI release manager. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, okay, another one. Of, um, has everyone seen the more 
minor updates at, at that point. Yeah. Uh, so the, the main concern has been I think <coughs> to have the, the, the exact source version for those UDEPs available. Yes. Yeah, we've also got a, a patch from have, have we put that patch in place, the one that No, um, still not. Right, so I should put that on this too, I suppose. <laughs> um, I only sent it five times. <laughs> There's your mistake. <laughs> um, so we've got a patch that um, adds uh, higher support for the UDEV packages used to build. Sorry, that that adds all the UDEV packages used to build the the tub the the init RDs. Yeah, the by hand init RDs, tables, okay. whatever for uh -huh. DI into into a spare suite. Yeah. That will keep the packages in the archive. They will keep uh, the binaries in pool and yeah. because of how uh, it works also in the sources. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment we don't have that patch because we haven't actually had any DI uploads since then, but now we do. Uh, didn't, wasn't the last DI upload uh, always a hand collected new suite for it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what this patch if this patch uses a given suite. Yeah, but it's, so it's, it's automatically yeah, no longer done by hand. It's also yeah. a common suite for every single suite. Uh, rather than um, HDI and such HDI it's the idea that the suite is only having one version of the package. Yeah, but it's a hidden suite and we don't ever see it, so it's alright. Are you sure are you sure that works? Yeah. That the the package is not all to clean out? No. Only if there are packages files for them and then we don't. Yes. Oh. So if it's if it's so if never, it's never, never, never unhide it. It's not clean it out. <laughs> I just consider that it's ugly. <laughs> well, that That's okay. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> you don't see the ugly. <laughs> I see it. Close your eyes. <laughs> 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 I have to think of everything here. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, does anyone want to like change, uh, I guess, change as files and sources to Z to be using a secure hash instead of MD5? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a secure there's, one? There's talk about this on Debian security and there's no point. Um, no, 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 no. That, that's for the announcement list where Act will do the verification using SHA already for you. This is for the changes file where we only include an MD5 sum of the files we're uploading. Uh, also, uh, oh, is, is, it more, is it more a sanity check than a security measure anyway? It's the it's only secu it's the the security, security measure we have. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way of verifying the files we uploaded are the ones we said we're uploading. 
If, MD5, if the MD5 file. song can be broken, then you can take a valid PGP signature and bypass. The, you can take somebody's valid PGP signature up or something, something they've signed, replace the package mm -hmm. that they actually uploaded with all the same checks out. Uh, HS, I think it would make sense to uh, allow optionally a new method if it works well enough, somehow duplicates the old method and somehow let it die. But I don't think it's too urgent to do it. Is it possible to add uh, extra hashes that are ignored by existing tools or adapt so existing the, the tools? So the problem with, um, like we've already added the extra SHA-1 and SHA-256 to packages files because we just had an MD5 some line and now we've got MD5 some SHA-1 some and SHA-256 some. Um, but for dot changes, we've just got files section, which doesn't really give us room to add the shell ones in any kind of obvious. But you you could you could, you could, you could you could add one column ash. Yes, you could just see if you, if you add if you add an extra column, then that breaks the format and suddenly all your tools are broken. No, but you could you could replace MD5 sum with something like SHA one column and then the SHA one sum. Like it's done as password fields, for example. Yeah. Can, can we update the tools first and allow the use? No, no, I was new... actually thinking that we'd um, block up those in DAC until someone decides to update the tools. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that means we don't get any uploads for a while, at least that means we don't get any bugs either. Upload to fix tools for Oh, that's an interesting little conundrum. I guess that would be a problem. <laughs> support the tools to ignore everything that starts with, uh, with I mean, we no. define no. an extended checksum uh, thing that includes the checksum name well, and is identifiable, <coughs> and at that yeah. point you ignore everything that has checksum names that, that you don't understand and upload the, update the tools for that. You then you can change checksum at any time. You just, we just add new checksums and the new the two new ones will be ignored so we, we don't break the tools for the next version. You can do a hack and have a new field like SHA1 and duplicate the, the file information there with SHA1 right. instead of MD5. A multi-line field? Yes. So yeah, you can just have a field that says hash type that if it's not present defaults for MD5. Yeah. Um, but it still means if, if, if it's going to be the only hash that's in the file, actually, yeah. uh, you, you will still have to uh, update the tools that read the file before you can allow it. Yeah. Well, and write the file. before you can allow for it to be the single, the unique. Yes, way. right. And I think your proposal was to add an extra file se section with a dash. Uh, yes. So what yeah. could we not to just replace MD5 by the SHA1? Yeah, all SHA1 is pretty close to being broken too, so... Okay. Then we have some <coughs> practice in replacing the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you do need to, to... I think the smart thing is to, to update the tools that process stuff first and then allow the, stuff, the, back, the, the tools that generate the file yeah, so to use the alternative format. The idea would be to have um, you be able to upload um, changes and, and ideally have sources be generated with SHA-1 and SHA-256 at the same time as MD5 is still working. Yeah. And I know that the tools are updated and at least in testing and I don't know, maybe even in, maybe even in letting as stable um, only then start blocking MD5 and yeah, but as soon as the tools are updated in, in all of testing, we could start allowing SHI 1 or 265 uploads. Mm -hmm. But actually, yeah, but, I mean, if, if the, the DPKG source are start generating SHA 256 files sections yeah. as well, because they just get ignored, yeah. but then there's a base of, uh, of uploads that have it and allow you to test I think the, the archive side. But so that is indeed where to start from. But actually, the bad thing is that if you add another, another section, um, I currently consider it a bit hard. So, well, well it, it looks a bit ugly to say we, we have uh, adding headers that just defeats all the checksums. Yeah. It's better to just say hash type is that and that, and that you use. Yeah, I agree.
You don't need to make it extra ugly. But then you have no transition. You have. Yes. You can have two tools that parse the file, support both. Yeah, but at, at the moment you can't generate a file that says no, cor correct something else. Correct. Because you have to update. Yes, it. but it's it, 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 it just the like you sections. You have two advantages. One, you can already start generating packages with that, which you use what's, to test the server. What does it help? What's and the advantage? And the second advantage is that you can test multiple hashes. No, but you yes, don't need you multiple. Anyway. Sorry. Uh, it, and, and then it, you, ha you have a transition period. You can just continue using the current format, which means there's no hash type defined, which means it's MD5. And only at the moment where you start the file and say, hey, this package now has some another hash type. Only from that moment on, it does do anything. So I, and I think it's also pretty easy and generic and pretty consistent in the way that how changes files are written. So I really like that idea very much now. How, how many, in how many places are there tools that process the changes file? I'm a VSL. VSL. Hmm? DSC. Yeah, the DSC and the sources are all a problem. Yeah. Okay. I think the main issue is, 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 is the changes file because the DSC, we can live with MD5 something and the DSC way better than with uh, in the changes. And well, because the changes are signed anyways. When I spoke to my question, how many tools are there that actually do those checks? And where do we live? To well, when I sponsor a package, I get the DSC in a signed yeah, email by it. my sponsor, and I download the rest and I use the DSC to create the trust chain. So I do want to have secure hashes of that. I, I, I hope that you, that, you, um, that you check, of course, all the contents that you sponsor to the archive, anyways, by yourself. Yes, I do check all the contents, but if someone puts malicious code, I, don't, I can't check every C file. I do that diffs. You don't check every C file. <laughs> <laughs> now you're blocked by a sheet. But if you if count, what, what is it? It's Duck. Duck has one central place where the uh, sums are checked. So it's easy. Uh, I think I have more than one place. It is once something like check signature where you, where you apply it if two is the thing. But uh, even if it's two or three, yeah. it's not so hard. Yeah. Duck is easy to fix. And then we have dpackage source. Apt is in a similar sort of style. Yeah, apt, uh, dpackage source, uh, d uh, then we have dpackage change again changes. And there'll be things like dput and stuff as well. Uh, dput, so we have 10 packages. Yeah. Is that <laughs> used in, check in, in checking multiple hashes for added security? That yeah. is, if we have sh1, sh256, if someone breaks sh256 and not sh1, then we can fall back on a stage. It's an example of yeah. whatever. Um, uh, I know. I, I'm not. I'm not sure that's actually beneficial in a security sense. Okay, I was wondering about that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm not a security expert or anything. So. Because if we support multiple ones, one get broken, we fall back automatically on the others because we check all of them at the same time. But yeah. if it's, we it's depend on one, that can be broken at any time actually. But so if someone breaks SHA, maybe MD5 is more secure than the broken SHA. No, uh, I, I not more secure, but not broken in, in that particular case. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, actually, if someone managed to break any of MD5 or SH1, uh, they have far more uh, interesting goals to break than they've been at least uh, uh, I would uh, know some of them. I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> I would be sure because. So you could earn a lot of money if you if you could break MD5 as such a one, and not with Debian Archive. Yeah, but nevertheless, we have the Debian once, Archive broken. <laughs> of course. <laughs> once it's made public, uh, you can tamper with anything you want. Um, but you, but but, you, but no one would make it public because that would just be a lot of waste of your money. We speak about billions here, yes? Yeah. It's really a very lot of money in, in, in good 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 profit. Lots of people. I don't know. Um, maybe yeah, but not so much money. Maybe you're interested you have in not politics recently, have you? Like, maybe oh. you're not interested in making money with the code, but simply by the uh, disruptor yeah. havoc and the disruption that you cause. Yeah, but I, I don't think, frankly speaking, um, well, the, the, uh, the current state is that mm. neither for MD5 nor for SHR1, there are these threats. There are a few. Concerns because the bit sum is getting too, 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 too small, 
which just means take a large algorithm, and the large algorithm would be SHA 256, and that's with the current state, okay, uh, if somebody would, is able to, to break the, uh, or just to fill with another change in something like 10 years' time, uh, a change from now, that's easily fixable because we can just say, duck, the fuse all changes are like more than a week old. Mm. Yeah. That shouldn't be the issue. Going on to the next uh, point. The next point is. I believe this beer available. Like, <laughs> well, next point. <laughs> <laughs> so last one, 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 one request from IRC. Yeah, I think we want to ignore that. Did you switch it? Can add new one. Can you read it out for the rest of the? Um, there is one request from IRC, which is TPKG6 support, which are signed binary in package files. I have two more topics as well, by the way. You should stop soon, there is food soon. <laughs> Sick food is your problem, not mine. Oh god. Um, so I have no idea about the attack of six foot. I think there's a check in there that specifically bans it, and I personally don't see the point of it, so I just ignore it. Okay, I'll uh, publish. Uh, okay, um, is there a way to publish changes file? in a public place without uh, risking replay attacks or something like that? Um, I, I, I'm not even sure that it's that the changes files are published on local at the moment. They're right, definitely, just on the, they're, they're the definitely changes. Changes. You can't actually um, find for source files, you can't find them publicly in the PTS and stuff like that because they go via changes. Yeah, the binary string. Play, replay, replay, um, that is a change file. So, you can't one thing you can't recover is testing, just from changes files. You need to have some idea of which packages are meant to go in there. Yeah. The only thing I think they've been used for is to verify the actual devs on the unrecovered hard drive from like the archive, uh, the ones that were uploaded. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as it's signed by a developer, then there's not really a replay attack available there. Like all, all you're checking is that it was the one that was uploaded. So a replay says that it was one that was uploaded, which is what you're trying to find out. Okay, now yeah, while well, I was more thinking of the DOS against uh, back in any way, but so nothing is really preventing us from publishing the, the changes files? Um, well, they, they are published by self changes. Well, not only from uh, uh, source for uploads. I not, not from thought there was another right. mailing address that gave everything. I don't subscribe to it, so I don't pay attention. I think this is just okay. Answer, so or there's nothing. Problem. There's nothing stopping this except bandwidth, like human or machine or whatever. Um, we've definitely got all the changes files in QDUM on FTP master. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure if we sync them to Merkle for DDs to get access, we should, but I just don't know if we do. Um, mostly because the directory is rather unpleasant. Um, and we don't really have them anywhere publicly available, but that's more that no one's done it for any reason. Okay. And I mean, they're less than thoroughly useful because they're signed <coughs> by a thousand different people and are only MD5 equivalent. Those are things we should be fixing anyway, sort of, or making less problematic anyway, in the case of the signatures. Yeah. You have like five billion more things, right? Yes, of course. But I will just set up this one, and I'm not too sure if that's really a good idea then, but um, if we could, I would decide then if it would be helpful if we start using code names for all stable and stable. Uh, I've been testing for the very reason that we have, we, you can remember we had the built with issues all stable. I, I think it would be a really good idea because that, that would stop us having to roll over security stuff as well, but it's a code name thing, so I try not to care about naming conventions. Yeah, but it's, it, it would really help and we do, we do that with other Wanna Build suites and there's, you just don't notice the release in Wanna Build because it just works. 
So how yeah, to change it? Seems, but you changed all the configuration stuff. That's all there is to it. I mean, you changed the entries in the sweep table in Postgres. Yes. Well, and you changed the dat conf and you changed the dat conf. We could we could perhaps try to do that. Then we release Lenny. So we should then use Lenny. Oh, so we can do that right now. Um, it's just. But no, a matter of changing the fit of the stuff. We have two different sets. So one is on is within DAC and the other one is within Vanna build, which is independent. Yes. But both are would be I think would be really helpful if we do it. Yes. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> I, so I, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so we just should do it. Um, I, I'm not just doing that without discussing with James and um, Of course. Brian. But I didn't suggest otherwise, of course. Really? Jürgen, Jay and um, okay, that's one. Next one? I had another one, but uh, we will discuss it later. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really close. Actually, I, I just <laughs> want the topic, and I hope to remember it before we <laughs> leave the course. Oh, oh it's not before. I think oh, I've heard that before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because I want to have something to eat now. Okay, any, anyone, anything else from anyone other than Andy? Just how does DAC handle uh, build blocks and by users? It doesn't. It doesn't? Okay, does it Not just so. discount them? It, it doesn't see a build block at all. Uh, if you uploaded it, you would have to have it be a by hand section or go in by hand and get the money forever. Okay. Would that be interesting to have? Probably. Yes. I think it would, but. Um, um, so, so just to the, build. The, the problem is that all the build D stuff is done by one build. So all the one for root stuff, which does the build D to in the build blocks, is completely separate to DAC, so you'd have to have some way to get it over there. And I am not familiar enough with the build D and stuff to know how that would work. So one of the things I'm going to do put into mall is actually the build D build block from one of builds, and then add another interface for people who do manual builds to upload to also sign those in a way and get them and into uh, Yo, well, after I've just, 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 just to go back on that, the idea was that um, maintainers that are manually uploading the source yeah. send their build log for the architecture they built so that it appears in the build logs with everything else, right? Yeah. 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 Actually, Tentica is both, I could just send my, my build log to the right address and it just appear on build DO. I just don't do it because I quite sure knew I wouldn't like it. Yeah. It should be somewhat authenticated. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. It just it just works currently, so why should we change it? But there's another question that I have. So let's put the address in the topic of that new developer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make that topic change. <laughs> we can also drop all the hashing from dot changes. It's also but a it's 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 part of the source. Even the even it's it's archive. The, the package in the archive we downloaded, it tells you where to send the mails to. So even I know it. <laughs> yeah, just a random developer. Yeah. Right. Uh, Adrian, you have seen the last question on the IRC? Yeah, could we discuss somehow Ad adding um, Zobel P new to DAC? It's not yet complete, but it would help yes, the stable release managers to speed up stable releases. And offhand, I have no idea what PU new dot I actually does. Sh just take a look. It, it, it's basically a shortened version of Lisa. Uh, which which one's Lisa? <laughs> I don't remember the name of this one. That's okay. Is it Lisa is Sorry? Lisa is Cortez Dior. Oh, okay. It that just goes over the PU and UQ and uh, scans packages and you could add commands, accept it, whatever. Wild um, commands. So what, why does that why why does that need to be in DAC rather than just in Zobel's home directory or wherever? Big or in the release, release of home directory. Well, I think it it fits better in dark, but well, I mean, if it's a tool that several release managers want a regular use and doesn't need any permissions, then it seems like it should be the same release managers that have control over it. Because if it's in dark, then and you need to hack on it, you don't have permissions to change it. Which seems stupid. Oh, you could give just give us a permission. <laughs> no, I can't, because I don't have permissions to give permissions. <laughs> oh, David, but this was a plan, actually. Has sourceful only uploads been already discussed in this part? <laughs> <laughs>
Didn't I mention it? No, no. I hadn't. <laughs> okay, okay, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> I see it as a problem that uh, we currently can't do any rules for architecture independent packages and they're all built on developer machines. I think uh, you, you, can't, you can't do a binary only you get a new because if you don't change the source then it's architecture all so what's really going to change. Um, and yeah, they are all built on developed machines, but I mean, build these are ultimately developed machines too. What one could do? Yes, but uh, I don't think you can really compare the, the, the environment. You, you can you have a stable, uh, the, the, the build is give you the, the advantage that you have a stable environment. Yeah, you only think that because you haven't really looked into the build days. Okay. Like a p-builder a run on a developer machine that's updated regularly is probably a better or a cleaner environment than the build these provide. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, like the build these have to take some optimizations, like not removing packages just so that they don't get slowed down too much because they have to build a lot of packages, especially on slower architectures. Um, <laughs> um, so, I mean, they're relatively clean and relatively up-to-date, but if you're doing a p-builder, then that will give you absolutely minimal stuff and absolutely up-to-date. And the build these will also give you some other checks, like um, checking that your build doesn't fail when some random other packages you didn't expect to happen to be installed, which is kind of useful sometimes too. Um, yeah, I mean, so a building would be better than an out-of-date testing or unstable environment that you might happen to have on your laptop, say. Um, but a p-build is probably better than that in turn. So, like my personal view is that having um, it be very easy for developers to set up p-builders and have have those have the same appearance as a build they call them. So you upload, you make the source available to your p-builder. It grabs it, makes it easy for you to sign, and then automatically uploads it for you. I, I think that would be a better solution than, or an equivalent and somewhat better solution. But actually, anyway. actually, some people already have such environments. Probably the best thing is just that somebody lights it up, puts it somewhere on a wiki page and link to it. Yeah. So um, if if someone wants to post that and make make the actual machine available to other people then doing the equivalent of a build D is just a matter of um, mailing the build log and the changes file back to the person who asked for it to be built and waiting for a response that includes the signed changes file signed by a DD's key and then uploading it for them. And that is pretty much literally a build D environment. So, um, the, the, I know DAC changes needed because they're already um, included from the landlord too was using that for uh, some sort of process. So it's kind of off topic. Anything else? Um, food? I say food. No objects. Excellent.